There are many ways that all the stuff in a picture can be organized, whether it's people in a history painting, or the features of a landscape or a beach scene, or items and shapes in a still life picture, or a person and their surroundings in a figure study or a portrait. Over time, artists have learned lots of options for organizing where things go and how things look to create a total picture that conveys the energy and the mood they want, the feelings that suit their theme. Today, I'm going to break down the picture making menu for dynamic compositions. Before going any further, let's make sure we understand this word composition. When we talk about the composition of a picture, we are talking about how all the parts of the picture are arranged, where they are placed in relation to each other and in relation to the overall shape of the picture and the edges of the picture. Put very simply, composition is the artist's process of deciding what goes where in their picture. Let's take a look at the different composition decisions made by the artist of these two frescoes. The one on the left is of a seated woman spinning yarn. It's restful and somewhat formal. How did she achieve this? The harmonious and muted color palette helps, but look at the way she has arranged the shapes so that the woman sitting in profile, sitting side on to us, is framed by a stabilizing grid of verticals and horizontals. Notice too how she's arranged the woman's head, her hands and the fiber she's working on into a kind of triangle at the top that stabilizes the composition. Now look at the second picture. Here two women are working in the field and it's a much more active scene. In fact, the artist has made it look like quite energetic work because the arms, legs and folds of the clothing all echo the diagonal thrust of the hoe digging the soil in the bottom corner. All the emphasis flows forcefully from the upper right down into the lower left corner. Look at the buildings in the background. She also creates this emphasis from deep space behind the woman to the close up corner in the bottom left. This arrangement of shapes creates a feeling of energy and movement. Now, if you're new to my channel and you enjoy this video as you are watching, please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on my future videos about artists, art methods and lesson ideas. If we want to create a picture with strong movement energy, what are our options? And by movement energy, I mean physical movement like dancing or running and emotional movement like joyfulness or anger or fear and psychological energy like uncertainty, tension or instability. I've broken this down into two sections, structures and shapes. Structure deals with the overall compositional framework, the big picture. Dynamic structures are usually asymmetrical. My dynamic shapes section deals with how each object or person or the various smaller parts of the picture or sculpture are shaped to echo the asymmetric structure and to amplify the dynamic feelings you want to achieve. Here are some options for creating asymmetric compositions. Our first three examples show the use of strong diagonals to create movement energy, but all three compositions begin with a contrasting structure. Here we see a strong, perfectly vertical shape in the middle. This reference point just goes to show how dramatically the diagonal shapes deviate from the vertical axis thus creating a very animated head study. We see something similar in this abstract by Kazimir Malevich, but here the reference is the horizontal axis of the black shape, set slightly off center so that it kickstarts the sideways asymmetric momentum. 
And then all the diagonal shapes are laid over the top and they lead our eye to the top corner. Here's the third example. If we look at the top right corner, we see a sort of blunt arrow shape pointing up into the corner. Then we notice this is counterbalanced by a dark bowl-like area in the opposite corner of the picture that stops the mass of shapes from falling out of the frame. From this base, everything just seems to leap up to the top with great energy. Now let's turn our attention to another counterpoint method with diagonals. See here that one of the most stable forms in art, the pyramid, dominates the middle of the picture. Note too that even this stable form is slightly tilted to the left, and then the artist has created a profusion of diagonal edges throughout the picture by breaking up every surface into pointy triangles that point upward in diagonal directions both left and right. This creates a sort of visual crescendo, a sense of amplified chaos and instability. In this next example, several strong diagonals create an asymmetric structure that creates a feeling of movement towards the right of the picture. But the figure is also compressed tightly within the frame. And this leads our eyes back to the center of the picture where the real energy is created by the swirling shapes of the costume, suggesting the movement of a dancer or an actor. There is a compressed and swirling energy in this ancient Greek marble sculpture too, but here the narrative is clearer as the three figures struggle to escape the giant snake. As the three figures try to pull themselves out from the center, they create energetic asymmetric curving forms, and yet the snake that curves in and out and around and over the three figures pulls them back together. These writhing forms create a feeling of continuous movement and anguished struggle. Our next sculpture also creates a feeling of movement by pulling the figure away from the center line. But this is more of a slow sideways lean, not a struggle. Maybe it is a psychological struggle. While it is restful, the imbalance is so extreme that there is also a feeling of uncertainty, anticipation that something is about to topple over, or that the figure wants to flee. Notice that in all these examples, the artists have created structures and shapes that lead our eyes away from the center of the picture. Asymmetry is a risky strategy because artists don't really want us looking completely away from their picture. If our eyes are directed to the edges, there must be something that pulls us back into the picture, and then we move to the edges again and are pulled back again. It is through this circulating pattern of eye movements that our bodies mimic the movement narrative within the artwork, and so we begin to feel what the artist is expressing. Notice in Vincent van Gogh's figure, Sowing Seeds, how the shapes and lines all echo the movements of this figure as they're walking diagonally across the field, as if they're going to walk right out of the picture frame. And at the same time, while there is enough space in front of the figure for our eyes to follow them, this space also acts as a break on our eyes, and we come back to enjoy the many details suggested by the artist's encyclopedic use of different lines. Thus, our eyes repeatedly sweep left to right and back again. Looking at these next examples, can you spot the dynamic methods artists have used? Often, artists are combining several methods in the same picture, like a diagonal structure and dominating swirls, or a diagonal structure with an explosive scattering of shapes, or a chaotic jumble of broken forms and squiggly lines so that our eyes never find a resting point. 
All these create feelings of movement, restlessness and dynamism. But as we've already seen, artists are often also combining opposite energies, that is, combining some stabilizing structures or calming symmetric forms right next to their dynamic forms and structures. This can sometimes strengthen the expressive power of the dynamic elements through contrast, or it can create a balance, a kind of yin-yang equilibrium between movement energy and feelings of calm. I'm going to make a second video about compositional stasis, showing how artists create calming energies in their compositions. Look out for that coming out soon.